Just watch this. I'm sure you will love it. Have a look at this. So here we have the subject layer and at the bottom we have a new background layer, right? All you have to do in the brand new version of Photoshop is to make sure that the subject layer is selected and then open up the properties. Now inside of the properties, have a look at the brand new button. Remove background, right? So click on that button, wait for a moment and have a look so easily the background has been replaced isn't that amazing so i gotta say adobe is definitely taking a step in the right direction you see when it comes to software updates they are of two kinds first introduction of a ton of new features and second making the existing ones work better the photoshop cc 2020 update leans more towards the second kind today we're going to explore the top 20 new features and additions this year and how to use them in real world situations for your convenience this video is divided into sections so you can skip to any feature you want by using these timestamps i'm super excited i hope so are you so without any further ado let's get started <laughs> Before we even begin the countdown, the first thing you'll notice right off the bat is the brand new Photoshop logo. Have a look at this. It now has rounded edges and also the PS is now in white. In the previous one, it was square and the PS was in the same color as that of the border. I don't know if you feel the same, but I feel that the Photoshop logo is becoming more like Apple's designs and leaning away from Windows. At least that's what I feel when I look at rounded edges. But anyway, let's start the countdown. Spoiler alert, the object selection tool is one of the biggest new features of Photoshop 2020. It is just like select subject. However, in this case, you get to determine which areas you want Photoshop to focus on. There's one feature in this tool that's going to completely blow your mind. Let's take a look. In this picture, we have two animals. Now, if you just simply click on select subject, Photoshop will look at the entire image and select whatever it thinks is the subject and therefore in this case it has selected both the subjects however what if you want to only select the right animal the object selection tool comes into rescue it is inside the quick selection group just select object selection and then make a selection around the thing which you want to select and automatically photoshop selects that subject and that's not all the object selection tool can do much more than this have a look at this photo if you just simply clicked on select subject it makes a selection that doesn't make sense at all however if you just wanted to select let's say the spoon or the fork all you have to do is to choose the object selection tool and by the way you can change the mode from lasso to rectangle and all you have to do is to drag a rectangle around the spoon and it automatically will make a selection around it. It's a pretty good selection, isn't it? However, what happens when the selection is not proper? Let's select the fork. So I'm going to make a rectangle around it. Now, these areas are not selected properly. However, with the object selection tool, you can also subtract and add to the object. And you don't have to do any complicated selections for it. So with the object selection tool still selected, you can hold the Alt key. It turns into minus and then just subtract this area by dragging a rectangle around it see isn't that amazing now there's one more thing i wanted to show you when you have the lasso selected and let's say you're making a selection just like this for the object selection tool when you hold the alt key it changes to polygonal lasso tool now you can make the selection in straight lines when you release the alt key it gets you back to the lasso mode you get the idea. The select subject has been improved dramatically in terms of accuracy and speed. So this is Photoshop CC 2018 just for your comparison. So here we have our subject. So I'm going to use select subject in the older version of Photoshop. Just click on select subject. Now it does a kind of pretty good job if I just remove the background and just uh, change the background to something like white. You will be able to see what's happening. So white is fine. Let's keep it as the background. It is kind of okay, but have a look at this. The edges are so low quality. And also at the same time, there are places where the selection is just not accurate. Now, I don't expect the hair to be selected with extreme accuracy. That's fine. But still, the edges are just not as good. However, let's open the same image in Photoshop CC 2019. So here we are on the brand new version of Photoshop and let's try select subject. Just click on select subject and have a look. It's so much faster than Photoshop CC 2019 select subject. and Click on the mask button and create a white background. Compare the lines. They are so much more cleaner than Photoshop CC 2019, aren't they? All you have to do is to just brush around with the Refine Edge tool around the hair and you will be good to go with just one click. Let me show you one more example. In this case as well, the background is a little complex. Just click on Select Subject. It does a pretty good selection, but it leaves out some areas. 
no problem. The brand new Photoshop also has one magical tool, which is the object selection tool, which we discussed before. With that, all you have to do is to hold the Alt key or the Option key and just make a selection around the area which you want to subtract and it automatically does that for you. Now, if this is not amazing, I don't know what is. The new document window is now faster and redesigned. It's almost instantaneous. Have a look. If I go to File and New, see how fast that is? I'm going to do that again for you. File, New it instantly shows up before it used to take a little while. The pixel layer properties have been greatly improved with a couple new features which are very essential. Let's take a look. So here we have the burger graphic. If we just simply open the properties, it has so much more information than the previous version. Now you can align. There are a couple of quick actions like remove background and select subject. So let's go ahead and align this burger to the horizontal center. Let's select all by pressing control or command A and click on this button right there. It automatically aligns the burger accordingly. There are a lot more options like here, which is distribute, distribute spacing, which will take a whole new tutorial to explore. But just know that there are a ton of options. It also has aligned to selection. So we made a selection of the entire canvas and then we aligned the burger horizontally. Also, let's press control or command D. If you just click on this drop down and select canvas, it will also center according to the canvas. So if let's place the burger right here. And even if nothing is selected, if you just click on this one, align horizontally, it will place the burger in the horizontal center of the canvas. However, if you wanted the burger between certain areas, so let's say I want to make a selection from the middle or from R to B, right? And you want the burger to be between these selections. So once the selection is done, you would change align to selection and then click on this button. Now the burger is just between these walls, the left wall and the right wall. If you want the burger to be between the top wall and the bottom wall, you can of course click on this button once the selection is made and you get the idea. You can make alignments according to the selection and the canvas. Let's move on to another example. And in this case, let's explore the quick actions. So if you open up the property, so here we have the subject layer. This is just the same thing we showed in the beginning of the tutorial. And at the bottom, we have a brand new background and top. I have added a little bit of vignette. So anyway, so here we have the subject. If you just simply click on select subject, it does the same thing as clicking up. So the subject is now selected. Let's press control or command D. It is just the same thing as just clicking on the select subject. Once you have selected the quick selection tool or the magic wand tool, if you click on remove background, it simply selects the subject and then creates a mask by clicking on the mask button. It's just that it does it automatically. So if you click on remove background, boom, background removed. It just created the mask with the select subject selection. Now, this is one of my favorite features, very helpful, especially when you're retouching or compositing. So this is actually zooming in to the layer content. So whatever is in the layer, if you just want to zoom into that automatically, this is how to do it. So let's say you want to zoom into the burger, hold the alt key or the option key and click on the burger layer. It will zoom into the burger. So now you can work on the burger. Let's say you want to zoom into that star mark right there, star symbol, and you want to work on it. So hold the alt key or the option key, click on that layer or group, which is star shape. It will zoom into that. This not only helps you with zooming into that particular layer content, but also helps you navigating through your image. So now let's say you want to work on the phone icon. You would have to zoom out and then just find the phone icon and then zoom into that. Instead of doing all that, once you are into this, all you have to do is to hold the alt key or the option key, click on the phone icon. It will just take you there. In case you haven't noticed yet, the new layer button has been renewed to finally something that makes sense. The content of airflow has been improved with three new buttons, which we will definitely push. In this photo, let's say you wanted to remove these lines. So first of all, let's make a selection around it with the help of the lasso tool. I'm going to make a simple selection right here. And now let's go to edit and then content aware fill. Now you were aware of this. However, inside of that, have a look, three new buttons, sampling area options, auto, regular and custom. First of all, let's look at auto. So on the left hand side, we have the areas in green areas from which Photoshop will consider a sample to replace that selected area. 
So as you can see, Auto did a pretty good job of only selecting the water bodies and not selecting this dark area, not selecting the mountain. So Auto is pretty great. You can also subtract or add to the Auto with the help of the first tool, which is the Sampling Brush tool. You can just paint to subtract. Or if you want to add something, hold the Alt key or the Option key and then paint to add. You can also use these buttons, plus and minus. You get the idea. You can also subtract this area as well for a better coverage. See this area is updating. The second one here is rectangular. It just creates a rectangle around the selected area. And you can of course subtract or add to it. The third one is custom. This is where you use the brush to paint on the areas where you want to sample from. Even Photoshop tells you that. Just hit OK and let's brush to add the areas I want to sample from. And Photoshop looks at those areas and replaces the selected areas. Hit OK once you're satisfied. That's how it's done. A lot of new additions have also been made to the text layer properties besides the pixel layer properties. So this is a simple text layer. If we just open up the properties, if you cannot see the properties here, you can go to window and make sure properties is checked. Have a look. It has so much more things that we can control. The character, the paragraph. And if you just scroll down, the type options. And there are there's a new thing called stylistic sets. First of all, let's understand what is stylistic sets. Some open type fonts have stylistic sets. They are just a collection of alternative style of texts. So in this example, we have the text layer selected. And then if you just simply click on this button right there, which is the stylistic sets button, you can choose whatever style you want. So if I click on silver, all of them will turn to silver. If I just click on blue, they should turn to blue. But it's not happening. Why? Because silver is checked. The topmost set will be applied. So if we uncheck silver, the blue will be applied. Right now, blue is checked. So you can uncheck blue and you can apply anything that you want. Terra Rosa. I don't know whatever that is, but you get the idea on how to apply stylistic sets. There are a lot of options, which again, will take a whole new tutorial to explore. You can also directly convert your text to vector. So if I just create a new text layer. Let's create a new text layer and let's type something. And this time let's choose the font Kilroy. And Kilroy extra bold. I'm going to type in Unmesh, right? If you just simply click on this button called convert to shape, this is now a vector. You can modify it in any which way you want. Now when you go to file save as in Photoshop, it also has support for animated GIF or GIF. Doesn't matter how you pronounce it. So this is a simple video that I had made just to show you an example, just a meme. Go to file and then save as. Now inside of save as, of course, this is a new window. We'll talk about that later. For now, let's click on save on your computer. In the save as type menu, you can now select GIF. And let's name this animated example GIF. That's fine. And click on save. Now the GIF save options will show up. You can customize it according to you. And I'm not going to go there. Maybe it's for a different tutorial. But for now, I'm going to leave it at the default values and hit OK. It's now saved. Now if you go to our file explorer or finder, our GIF is ready. The lens player is now faster, uses the GPU more, and it has a couple new features that's going to make it easier to work with. Let's take a look. So here we have an aerial shot. I have already created an alpha channel for creating the lens player effect. And first of all, let's make a copy of the background layer with the background layer selected. Press Control or Command J. Now we have a copy. Let's go to filter, blur, and then lens blur. It should be right there. So it has already selected alpha one as the source. And now here's the great feature. If you click on this button, if this button is enabled, it will allow you to click to focus. So if you want to focus this area, just click on that area. That area will now be in focus. If you want to focus this area, just click on that area. That area will be focused. Of course, you can control it manually by using this slider. But this makes it so much more easier to just click an area to focus it. And even though this is a reasonably large image, Look how lens blur is so much faster than the previous version. Now coming to my favorite new feature of this brand new Photoshop update and that is opening up smart objects. So whenever you're working with a composite or let's say a retouching project, we usually end up making a ton of layers. And to simplify those, we group them into a smart object. So let's say I grouped everything that deals with the subject. I'm going to select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one, right click on it and choose convert to smart object. Now it has been grouped. But what if you want to open up the group back again? 
you would have to double click on the thumbnail, open up another document, and in this document, you would have to manually copy all these layers, paste it back again here, and then delete this darkening smart object, whatever we have combined that into, it's a whole mess. All you have to do now is right click on this and choose convert to layers. Now, the smart object group shows up and all the layers that were there shows back again. Now that is what I say, extremely convenient. Now if you want to just remove the group and make it the way it was, you can right click on the group and choose ungroup layers. It will become the way it was. If you're using a Mac, you can directly import from your iPhone or iPad by going to file, import from iPhone or iPad. Right now I'm working on Windows so I can I cannot show you that feature. The tilde key, or in other words, the key onto the left of one, will be very useful now with the brush tool. So let's say you're painting. If you hold the tilde key, it will now act as an eraser. So painting, if you want to erase something, just hold the tilde key and erase it. You wouldn't have to go back and forth the eraser tool and back to the brush tool. It also works great with masks. So if you just click on the mask button and you're just painting with black, right? You're erasing stuff. If you want to bring back something, all you have to do, hold the tilde key and paint. It will do just the opposite. If white is the foreground color, the opposite will happen. If I just paint, it's bringing things back up. However, if I hold the tilde key, it will erase it. If I release the tilde key, it will bring it back up. I'm pretty sure that I'm not pronouncing the word tilde, right? Just correct me, but you get the idea. It's the key onto the left of one. The tilde key can also be used to rotate the brush tip. So let's say you're working with this painting brush, right? And you want to rotate the tip. Here's what you do. Hold the tilde key and the arrow keys, the right arrow keys to rotate it clockwise and the left arrow key to rotate it anti-clockwise. Let's say you've opened up a ton of Photoshop documents and you just wanna work on this one and close all the others. You don't have to go ahead and manually select this document, close it one by one. All you have to do is to choose the document that you're gonna be working on and go to File, Close Others. All of the others will be closed at once. This was such a pain before and it's one of those features that I was eagerly waiting for. One of my biggest complaints with Photoshop CC 2019 which held me from using it for a very long time was the change in transformation shortcuts. With the introduction of 2019, most of you all know, you would have to press Ctrl or Command T to show up the transformation tool. But after that, in previous versions, you would have to hold the Shift key to maintain the proportions. However, in 2019, this is 2019 open, you did not require to hold the Shift key to maintain the proportions. However, when you hold the Shift key, it will not maintain the proportion. Just the opposite happened with 2019. The problem was not only limited to Adobe suddenly changing the shortcuts, but the problem is the double standard. Have a look at this one. If you just simply create a shape, let's create a rectangle right here. Now in this case, if you press Ctrl or Command T, and then if you do not hold the Shift key, the proportion will not be maintained. And then when you hold the shift key, the proportion is maintained, just the opposite. So it's it gets very confusing. First of all, you suddenly change the shortcut and then the shortcut that you change doesn't work across shapes and pixels. It, it is just confusing. Adobe finally fixed it with Photoshop 2020. Now when you press Control or Command T, you don't have to hold the shift key. It will maintain the proportion even with shapes. So if I draw a rectangle, and then when I press Control or Command T, I don't have to hold the Shift key, it will maintain the proportion here as well. Now, one more thing was added to this which makes it completely exciting and such a relief for me. And that is the preference to change it back to how it was before or on 2018. So let's go to Edit and then Preferences. And inside of Preferences, we're gonna go to General. You can check this. Use Legacy Free Transform. When you check that, hit OK. Now, press Control or Command T. Now you would have to hold the Shift key for maintaining the proportion in both the cases, pixels and shapes alike. And this is such a great help for people like me who have been habituated to hold the Shift key for decades. Actually, uh, for me, it was 10, 12 years. The Transform Warp is now way more advanced than it was before. 
Heck, I'm just gonna read it out. So enhanced transform warp, we built more control in the warp tool. Add control points everywhere and divide your image with a customizable grid and whatever. So I'm just gonna show you what it does. So have a look at this photo. If I just make a copy and press control or command T, now if you right click to it and choose warp, it doesn't show anything. Previously, it used to show a grid. Of course, you can just create a grid by clicking on this drop down. Choose 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 or whatever suits you. However, I'm just going to choose custom right here and choose one column and one row to begin with. Now, right click on it and choose split warp horizontally and you can create your own grid. So this is your own grid. You can just play with it accordingly. You can also split it vertically. Right click on it and choose split warp vertically. So you can create a point right here and play with it. You can click on the points, play with the handles. It's just so much more advanced. I'm gonna right click one more time and split vertically from here and make the car look cartoony and interesting. So have a look. You can click on the points, play with the handles accordingly, according to your wish. You can also split using the buttons at the top. And this one is split crosswise. Let's click on that one. And if I click on it right there, it creates both vertical and horizontal. And you can play with the same. And now here's one more feature. You can also select multiple points and make it bigger or smaller or rotate them. So let's select this point, hold the shift key, select this point as well, this point as well, and that point as well. Now all of them are now selected. You can make them smaller, bigger, or even rotate them. See how advanced it is now? Of course, once you're happy, hit enter or return and your changes will be applied. The presets are enhanced as well with some new presets. Let's check them out. So let's say you want to create a pattern in the background. So first of all, let's create a pattern layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose pattern as an adjustment layer. Hit OK. By the way, this is a new one. Hit OK. Now let's unlock the layer, the subject layer by clicking on the lock and let's bring the pattern at the bottom. And how do we remove the background? We just learned that in the brand new Photoshop, all you have to do is to select the subject layer, open up the properties and inside of the properties, just choose remove background and the background is removed. Now I want the background to be black and white with the pattern layer selected, click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose black and white. Now that is taken care of. We were talking about patterns. So if you just go to window and then let's choose patterns, you will see a lot of presets right here. You'll see trees, see, you'll see grass, you'll see water. I really like these trees right there. I'm just going to click on this one and all you have to do is just one click and it will change accordingly. This one, that one, whatever that, whatever you like. Now, of course, once you click on that pattern, it creates one more new layer on top of it, which is, which is crazy, right? Let's delete this. Make sure that the pattern layer is selected and only then when you click on it, the pattern will change accordingly and also the black and white adjustment layer will be applied. So this is single click presets. Now, if you want this to have a solid color instead of a pattern, you don't have to create a brand new solid color adjustment layer, none of that. Once you have the swatches open, so I'm gonna go to window and make sure my swatches are open. And all I have to do is to drag the color and drop it right there. This will change into a color fill layer. Of course, there's a black and white layer on top of it. That's why it's getting black and white. I'm just going to turn it off. You All you have to do, just drag it and drop it. Now, if you want this to be a gradient, you don't have to again go to the adjustment layer icon, click on it and then choose gradient. None of that. Just open up the gradient presets. Go to window and then click on gradients. There's a lot of gradient presets and if you scroll down, you will find basics, blues and purples, a lot of these. Just drag it and drop it over there. Boom. It's now a gradient adjustment layer. So little changes here and there, one click presets, brand new presets and then just easily change adjustment layers to solid color, gradients and patterns. Now this is interesting and can be useful especially when you're traveling, using different computers or maybe working in a team. That feature will be available later. However, Photoshop now supports cloud documents. So let's say this is a Photoshop document that I want to save. I want to go to file, save as. It will show you a window. Do you want to save it on your computer? This is the usual saving process that we used to do before. However, there's a new option here, cloud documents. What that will allow you to do is have a look. 
you can read it yourself. Cloud documents are saved automatically. So as you're working in Photoshop, it will save them automatically to Adobe's cloud. Now, if you want access to it, you don't have to have access to the file. All you have to do is to just sign into your Adobe account in whatever computer you're using and you will have access to the file. And in future releases, you will be able to use them to collaborate with others as well. So you're working on a PSD file, somebody else can access it. He can maybe take it further, add some designs, and then you guys, you guys can, you get the idea, you guys can collaborate. So I'm just gonna go to save to cloud documents. I already have some cloud documents. You can just name it whatever you want and then save it. Have a look at the logo right there. It changes to a cloud, which means it is a cloud document. And anytime you wanna have access to any of your cloud documents, all you have to do is to click on cloud documents right there and you will have it right there. And also you can go to file, open recent, and these are the recent files that we worked with. And the one with cloud beside it is a cloud document. Doesn't matter if it's in your computer or not, if you just click on it, it will download it over the internet. If there's a distraction which we just cannot remove with Photoshop, what do we do? We crop it. And that's exactly the next feature. It's not a you know huge feature, it's just that the crop tool has been redesigned and it looks fancy now. Press C for the crop tool. Have a look at the crop design. It's it's much more refined, it looks futuristic, it looks nice. There's nothing new here, it's just the regular old crop too. It just looks new. That's what I wanted you to know. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Those were the 20 new features of the brand new Photoshop. Please let me know down in the comments below which one was your favorite. Also, there were a couple extra features which I could not cover and I can read them for you. Of course, there's 32-bit support now for curves and brightness contrast adjustment layers and also dialog boxes. And also there's a brand new home screen when you open Photoshop. It's just the layout is new. Also, gradients are now supported in the library panel. I hope you're excited to try some of them out. So go ahead, try it, play with it and please share your images with me. I would love to see them. Tag me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter and tag me there as well. I would love to see your photos, comment on it. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pixim Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for all your support. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a very lot of fun. Growing up is just a trap.